Okay, now that you got your hang on some of the, uh, you got a hang on some of the function problems, let's take a more difficult one and see whether it poses to us a challenge. Okay, we have to find the maximum value of this big function over here. Okay, using what we know about functions. Now, at first hand, when I look at it, it doesn't seem to me like a problem of functions. Well, if it doesn't fall into the realm of functions, I don't know what topic in the Olympia does it fall under. But since this was in the function section, let's just treat it as a problem, as an Olympiad function problem, okay? And what do we know about functions in general? Well, there's the range and the domain, and I can see why that, that is a function problem, because the first problem is not really finding the maximum value of, of fx, or finding the, the value of fx in general, but to really find the domain of, of function x, because if you see, we got a square root here, and we got a square root here, that means that this function inside here, or this equation inside here, cannot be less than zero. You see, you see why? Because we can't take a square root of a negative number. So even though if we sketch that, it doesn't mean that every value of x would be applicable because we can't take the square root. That being the case, we would have to find where or in which region this thing is more than zero, okay? So let's just work that out, okay? Because we really need to know. We can't get started unless we don't know the domain, okay? 8x take x squared. What I like to do is I would like to find the, the square, sorry, what's the, finding the perfect square, putting in a perfect square, which how it goes is a minus here, it's an x here, okay, and I got, I know I got an 8, so I need to, uh, 8x, so I minus 4 and I square it, okay, I hope you see why, because that would mean I have a minus 8x, so I'll be minus that, so I'll get a positive 1, and then this will be 16, so it'll be plus 16, minus 16, plus 16. Okay, I'll just do that very quickly, completing the square. And for the second one, or y2, okay, it's equals to 14x, take away x squared, take away 48. A bit difficult, but let's just see, we got an x here, it's a 7, okay, we divide by 2. So this is 14x divided by 2, it's a plus, so I need to minus 7 again, okay. I need to square that, okay, let me just check, minus 7, correct, and then I got a 49, so I got a 49, and a minus 49, so I got a plus 49, and a take away 48, to compensate for the constant term, so it'll be x take away 7, squared, take away 48, so it's plus 1, okay, as easy as that, so now we have summarized these two functions, so we need to see when these two functions are more than 0, okay, so what is the way to do that, okay, well, we just simply let x take away 4 squared plus 16, we need it to be more than or equal to 0. So what we do is we bring this over the other side, okay? Knowing that, we bring this over the other side knowing that this is positive so that we can just simply bring over the other side and don't change the sign and then we'll square root both sides, okay? So when we square root both sides, I'll just quickly take this away and what we have, we got, this is between minus 4 and 4 over here. Just go check out some inequalities if you don't know what I mean. So if we bring this to a plus 4, so we got 0 and then x goes to 8, okay? So this is for the first one over here, okay? So it'll be um, 0 x is between 0 and 8, okay? Now for the second one, we do the same thing and I'm just gonna make do a quicker step. I'll bring this over the other side, then I square root, so it's 1 and minus 1, right? So it'll be x take away 7, 1, and then I'll plus 7, so I will get 6, and x equals to 8, not a problem. Okay, so for the one over here, okay, it'll be 6, x is between 6 and 8, okay? However, what we need is that we need both of the functions to be more than zero. So obviously, they will fall under this category over here because if, if x is say four, even though this would be more than zero if x is equal to four, this will be less than zero because four is not within this range. You see, we're dealing with two functions, so the conditions that we set for x needs to be applicable for the two functions. The condition in this case is that these equations inside the radical is more than zero. Uh, that is the, the, sorry, that is the requirement and these are the conditions for that to happen but since we need both of them to make it happen we need to pick this one over here where it's applicable for both I hope you see that so that is quite, it's good for us because now we have restricted x to be 6 and 8 okay, that is fairly uh, straightforward or at least we are making progress so now, it's a function question, or at least it was a function question because we needed to find the domain, knowing that the square root of a certain equation, if, it's, if the equation is less than zero, we, it's, we can't get an answer. So the domain is here. 
Now, we want to find the maximum value of fx here, okay? And then how we do that is that, you just have to think about it, we want to maximize this one over here, okay? And minimize this one over here, okay? I hope you see that. We want the maximum value, so we want max of fx. So since a minus sign here, we want to take away the smallest number, okay? And from the biggest number here, say, which is the, which is the square root, the first square root. And you might be now concerned with the square root sign because if I were to ask you to sketch this, okay, it's going to be quite an insurmountable task, okay? But let's just go with it to say that you can find the maximum value of this by finding the maximum value of that, okay? The minimum value of this and the minimum value of that. But here's the tricky part, okay? And that's why I say this is a bit of a monster of a problem because you just have a logical thing towards it, right? X can be between 6 and 8. However, does that mean that we can take the maximum value of, let's just say this equation, at say X is equals to 7, and then take the minimum value of this equation when X is equal to 8. The supposing that when X is equal to 7, this is the maximum value, and when X equals to 8, this would be the minimum value. Can we do that? Okay? The answer is no. Because why? We can only select one value of X over here. And I guess this is why a property of the function is very important because what it means, it means that we select one value of x, put it in there, and then we get the respective value. So, if that's the case, I would suggest that we draw a graph, okay? I would suggest that we draw a graph and we focus on the region of x is uh, between x is between 6 and 8 because it's only then we can see whether we get the maximum or the minimum value. Okay, so now the problem is sketching the graph, right? Okay, um, let's see how we're gonna settle that. Okay, now there's a few ways. In fact, there's a lot of ways. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna use the copying the square method since I already got that. Okay, now we know the vertex is x equals to 4, right? So let's just say we draw 4 over here. Now when we put 4 inside here, it's equal to 0, so x is equal to 16. Okay, so 16 over here. Now, this is the first function. So this one is the, this function over here, okay, which is y1, okay, y1. However, we still need to know we, when it crosses. Now, I know it's a negative sign over here, so I know that it, it bends this way. However, we still do not know where it crosses the x-axis, which is important because we need to stay within this boundary over here. So, what we let, as always, we let y equals to 0. So y equals to 0, we get the thing over here, minus 4, then we got a square, is equals to 16, so x is equals to 0 and 8, okay? Square root that is positive 4, we plus, we get our 4, so we got 8 over here, and our first graph goes like this, okay? Completing the square method, I believe it's quite straightforward. And the second one, the maximum is when x is equals to 8, okay? So x, sorry, x is equals to 7. The second function is here. So same method, we let y equals to 0, okay? Oh, sorry, we let x equals to 7, so 0, so is 1. So we know that it's 1 over here, which is like that over there, okay? And, but we know it bends downwards, but we do not know um, where it meets the x-axis. So we let y equals to 0, bring over square roots again. So when we square root, we get minus, and then we got a 6 and an 8, okay? You can go ahead and do the calculation. See, square root minus 1, minus 1 plus 7 is a 6. So we got 6 over here, and we got the equation over here. There we go, okay? And now, from here, we can look at what is the maximum value because, see, function fx is this minus this. So we want to max y1, which in this in the range of this one here, okay? I, mean, I emphasize that again, in that range, for it to be defined, okay? So we want to max y1 and the minimum y2, so I will pick this point over here which is when x is equal to 6, okay? And you just sub inside the values inside there. Uh, you can do that, I don't know, or I'll just do that for you. Okay, so function 6 is equal to 6, minus 4 is 2, minus 4. So minus 4 plus 16 would give me 12. And 6 would be 1, minus 1, and plus 0. So square root 12, don't forget that. Okay, because I started out with the square root over there. And there we go, the maximum value of that function is when x equals to 6 and that's equals to root 12. Some comments is that you are tempted to solve this question using calculus. Though I must say that all Olympiad questions can be solved without using calculus and there isn't a calculus solution which is better than some of the, the algebraic solutions which is in this case. 
But should you prove, should you want to take that route? Um, differentiating this function over here may seem like a problem, so you can try that, but I must say that it's not recommended. But how I will look at it is that when we want the maximum and minimum value of a certain function, always bear in mind what of the different components we want the maximum or the minimum. In this case, we want the maximum of this and the minimum of that. Okay, if it's a plus, we want max and max. Okay, and then why is it a function question? Because of the domain. This needs to be more than or equal to zero. Sketch the, sketch the graph and then take the what the maximum function of x is and there you go, there you have it, function question.